Are you tired of your low performance forerunner? Are you tired of getting passed by every vehicle on the highway? Back to said superchargers. Well, after 100,000 miles of testing, we're ready to answer your questions. These are our unbiased opinions because this video is sponsored by To the Dirt, sold exclusively on roadlesstravel.com. There's three main categories of questions that we get. Is this reliable? How much does it cost? And is it really worth it? The answer to all of those is yes. But one of the biggest questions we get is, is the supercharger reliable? We bought a Toyota, I'm sure most of you did, to have a reliable vehicle to take us all on adventures and not to worry about breaking down off-road or having any kind of issues. So why would you ever want to add something to your truck that would make it less reliable? I spent a lot of time talking to Magnuson and also talking to Toyota, and they assuaged my fears. Now, this supercharger runs on about six pounds of boost, which is on the lower end of most superchargers, which means that it's less damaging or less taxing on your engine. And since the engine and transmission are overbuilt, it can handle this power all day long. We put 100,000 miles on it. We've towed trailers, we've towed boats, and have never had an issue with either the engine or the transmission. Another great part that deals with the reliability of the supercharger is that it runs on a separate belt and coolant system. So that means that if you have an issue with the belt, with one of the pulleys, or even with the coolant, you can always disengage the belt and still drive home. This actually happened to us on our big road trip. We were about a thousand miles from home and we had an issue with one of our idler pulleys and as you can see here, this ring, that's the inside of the bearing race, and it's completely just blown out. So this has actually happened to us before. This is one of the minor issues we've had for reliability. Unfortunately, dust and dirt can get into the bearings. That's part of the nature of going off-road, going through mud, dirt, dust, whatever you might have. hard on bearings in general. So we always check those before big road trips to make sure they're not squeaking, making any weird noises, and it's an easy fix. I think this part was about $15. One of the other uh, grooved pulleys we had to replace, that was about $30. And the belt has been fine over the course of 100,000 miles, but we just replaced it last time, and that was about $50. So all in all, very reliable, does very well, and we have no qualms about running this on long, tough road trips. As far as reliability, we give this our thumbs up and say it's ready to go to the dirt. The initial cost of the supercharger can vary depending on where you buy it from. So with taxes here in Florida, it's around $7,500. Now, you also have to have it installed and we were quoted by a shop at 18 hours of labor and at $125 an hour, that's $2,250. So together, that's around $9,750, which amortized or spread out over six years is around $31.25 per week. With a supercharged engine, you have to run high octane fuel. So another cost analysis I did was how much it would cost for the average of gas prices at 87 octane for six years, opposed to six years of driving with 91 or 93 octane gas. And doing some quick math on it, I figured out that I spent about $3,200 extra total for that six year period to run high octane gas. So amortized over a six year period, that comes out to about $10.15 per week. So for me, that means not having breakfast at Dunkin' for one day out of the week. And in my opinion, it's totally worth it to get the supercharger performance that comes with the Magnuson. Another big question we get is about the overall fuel economy. And I was very pleasantly surprised when I first got the supercharger and saw that I had slightly better fuel economy over stock. I didn't really have any significant changes in fuel economy until I put bigger tires on and I saw a four mile per gallon drop overall. Ouch. Come on, man. One of the other big categories of questions we get are dealing with performance. How does it sound? I think it sounds pretty good. Now, in real world applications, how does the supercharger perform 
This thing is great for towing trailers, pulling boats. It gives you extra torque, extra horsepower. This thing did amazingly well on our big road trip. We did 7,500 miles uphill both ways and through the snow. We didn't have any problems with overheating. We had a lot of uphill ascents, which this thing pulled very well. We didn't slow down traffic. It was great. Compared to suspension, which you might only really utilize for off-road trail riding or rock crawling, the supercharger is something that you use 100% of the time when you're driving. You'll enjoy your vehicle. It makes it feel like a whole different animal. You'll notice the increased performance when you're driving on the road. You're driving off-road. This thing is hands down the biggest performance upgrade you can do for your vehicle and I highly recommend it. All right, so that's a quick wrap up of our review of the Magnuson Supercharger after 100,000 miles. If you have any questions for us, and wanna know anything more about the Magnuson Supercharger and our real life experience with it, make sure to leave a comment below. And until next time, to the dirt. a decrease in my fuel economy until I started flooring it at every single red light.